that you must go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We must experience the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit. When you have been born again, when you have been baptized with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, you have everything it takes to have a victorious, glorious Christian life. The name that is above every other name, by the light of the word of God today, your eyes are open. There is something about giving sight to people that is crucial to their destiny. Welcome to another wonderful time in God's presence. God sent His Word that will heal and deliver from destruction. Today, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the Word of God will bring healings to you. The Word of God will bring deliverance to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we appreciate you. We thank you for your goodness to us. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. We thank you for your mercy. Be exalted in the name of Jesus. As your word comes to your people today, bless them mightily. Amen. Let your name alone be glorified. Amen. Thank you, Father, for everything. Spirit of the living God, have your way. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Welcome, everybody, again today um, as we do the presentation of the book my newest book, Impossible to Ignore. The story of Impossible to Ignore is God's work of grace in taking a rejected stone to a chief cornerstone, that one that is impossible to ignore. I pray that will be your testimony too, in the mighty name of Jesus. I have Pastor Tony with me today, and um, together we will be encouraging you from the word of God, even as we introduce the book, Impossible to Ignore. Pastor, you're welcome, man. Thank you, sir. Um, I welcome everybody once again. Uh, God bless you in Jesus' name. We are exploring the treasures that God revealed through his servants in the book, Impossible to Ignore. And um, when we say something or someone is impossible to ignore, it means they are indispensable. You can't do without them. And uh, as Pastor has received in the book, the chief cornerstone, being a rejected stone, and by the transformation power of the Almighty God, becomes in impossible to ignore because by divine placement of the Almighty, has become the chief cornerstone, the one that the building cannot do without. So today, uh, we are going to be going further um, in exploring how do you become the chief cornerstone. Last week, we were able to start the process of this exploration. Uh, I say exploration because there are a lot of precious gems in the book, which God wants his people and whoever has been rejected. Um, but the truth is that before someone can become a chief cornerstone, before someone can become impossible to ignore, you know, they must have passed through rejection. It's rejection that, you know, brings out those things in us that, you know, by the transformation power of God makes us impossible to ignore. So last week, we started the process of how do you from re a rejected place. And what we exp explained last week is that when you go through pain of rejection, you have to acknowledge the pain. You have to examine what caused it. Is it personal? Is it someone that did it? And you have to forgive. And you have to also, you know, the pain is real, but you have to now go forward, decide to go forward, decide, you know, to take up your cross and fulfill your destiny. So today, if you are actually being, you know, moved on now, you have decided to move on, you have been healed. How, what are the practicals? How can you now become? Because it's not only healing. Yes, you are healed, but 
what of the agenda of God? What of the, the original plan of God for your life to become someone who cannot be ignored? How do you now take those forward steps to, to that very elevated position? And that's what, you know, Pastor is going to be sharing with us today. So, sir, how can you, being healed now, take that those steps? What steps do you need to take to actually become someone who will not and is not able to be ignored by the environment and the, the world at large. Okay. Um, once you've passed through the process of um, being healed from the pain of rejection, like we said the other time, the pain of rejection is real. Nobody wants to be rejected. So when you pass through one, any form of rejection and you have submitted you have acknowledged it, you have um, examined the cause, you have submitted to the um, healing power of our Lord Jesus Christ so, so, through some of the um, processes that we enumerated in, at our last broadcast. Now you have been healed. We said being healed is not the ultimate. The ultimate for every rejected stone is that that rejected stone will become a chief cornerstone. And I don't want us to lose sight of that because a lot of people have passed through rejection. Here yeah, they've been healed, they've moved on with their life, but they didn't know that there's still a major heritage for them. Because the scriptures cannot be broken. Every rejected stone in the hand of God will end up becoming a chief cornerstone. So once you have been healed of your rejection, what are you to do so that the full agenda of God for your life will be actualized? And we need to say this, that you see, becoming a chief cornerstone in life is a function of divine placement. It is God that places people at strategic position in their life so that that scriptures can be fulfilled. Psalm 118 verse 23 and tw uh, verse 22 and 23. Psalm 118, verse 22 and 23. It says, The stone which the builder rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the lost doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. So, for every stone that the builder has rejected, there is a capacity that that stone will not just be healed of the pain of rejection, but that stone will become a chief cornerstone, a stone that is impossible to ignore. The Bible makes us to understand that it is the lost doing. It is the lost doing because it is God that, in the course of that person's life, we strategically position to the person in a place that, by the reason of that placement, no one in that building, no one in that organization, and no one in that community, or in that family, or even in that nation, will be able to ignore the, the person. So, it is the Lord's doing. That is the first thing I want us to establish. So, don't go around um, trying to get even at people. Don't go around trying to pursue your own agenda. We will tell you what you need to do that will make you qualify to be divinely placed by God in that strategic chief cornerstone position. You see, it is the position that that stone occupied in the building that makes the stone a chief cornerstone. But it's not every stone that can occupy that position. So what God expects from you, like I've been enumerated in the book, is to fulfill the condition that God can used to place you where your destiny rightly belong. And as we said in the in the book too, about four conditions you must meet. We we'll just say a little about, about this condition. But the very first condition is that every chief cornerstone is a chosen stone. The Bible said that it is rejected by men but chosen by God. Chosen by God. You can never be a chief cornerstone if God has not chosen you to be. So there is a few that God has called you. There is a few God has chosen you. You cannot be a chief cornerstone in every field. You cannot be a chief cornerstone in every area. But there is an area, there is a few.
field that God has chosen for you, there is a calling that God... And it's what we're talking about calling, what we're talking about being chosen. It's not just about a ministry team. It's an assignment team. There's an assignment of God upon your life. For you to become a chief cornerstone in any field, God must have chosen you in that field. Because a chief cornerstone is rejected by men quite all right, but chosen by God. So, are you chosen in that field, in that, in that um, uh, engagement? Uh, is, is the call of God upon your life? And like I said, it's not a religious thing. You can be in business and you are called in that business. You can be in the ministry fire, you are called in the ministry. But you see, for everything, every venture you want to pursue, every assignment you want to pursue, clarify it with God that you are called for that, you are chosen for that. So it's a major, major uh, uh, um, ingredient that must be fulfilled before, you can, before God cannot place you in a position that you are going to be truly impossible to ignore. I think that's the, that's the foundation. Mm -hmm. That really is the foundation. Thank you, sir. Um, mm -hmm. for, from what Pastor has said, we have to realize that when we were born, we were born with unique gifts and talents that point us in, in the area where God wants us to function mm -hmm. later in life. There's a problem we are born to solve mm -hmm. and we are already born with the innate ability you know some people are naturally gifted in certain areas it's easier for them to function you know they don't have to struggle to function and that's like a pointer so all you now need to do is to train yourself to you know to get skilled in the area where you have talent so it might be in the science field you might be in the entertainment field. There are so many fields in life, but you know where God has called you. The solution God has put in you. And it's pain that brings brings up this thing. The pain that you pass through is a, is a pointer to the solution that you are born to solve. Because when you pass through pain, you know what it means. And when you see a problem, it's most likely... A problem that other people don't see and you are wondering how come people are not seeing this problem it's most likely that god wants you to do something about that field and that's what pastor is trying to say that the first thing to becoming a chief cornerstone is to know where you are born with the, the problem you are born to solve and in which field in which area in which line of business in which area of life does god want you and for you to educate yourself for you to be trained and pastor is going to be you know talking quickly about the next the next step which which if i may say really talks about you knowing how precious you are so i will hand over to pastor again to explain more of that you are precious yeah thank you so much ma um every chief cornerstone from the word of god first we touch chapter two Verse 9 is a precious stone. You see, when people go through rejection in life, the purpose of the enemy is to believe that they are, they are worthless. Rejection, particularly those ones that have been orchestrated by others mm -hmm. that didn't really come to appreciate the fact that you are special. Mm -hmm. Re the, the rejection is to make you start to feel worthless, to start to question your own ability and capability, to start to question your own worth. Mm -hmm. So one of the things rejection, one of the things that rejection, if it is not well managed, will achieve in the life of a person that suffered, uh, gone through the pain of rejection, is what we call low self-esteem. And there's no way you can be a chief cornerstone with low self-esteem. You will still scatter the house mm -hmm. because you'll be grossly insecure. Mm -hmm. So, every chief corner stone must be a precious stone. And they must know that they are precious. No matter what has happened, your value cannot go down. Your value is intact. You know, there is this story of uh, a teacher that stood in front of the class with a $100 bill. He raised the $100 bill clean. He raised it up. Who among you want this $100 bill? Everybody raised up their hand. 
then he put it on the floor, stepped on it, raised it up again. Who among these two hundred dollar bill? Everybody still raised up their hand. He did all manner of stuff, robbed all manner of stuff on his Chris did, you know, and literally abused it. Raise it up again. I mean, if you still want it, everybody still raised up their hand. They say, why do you still, why, why, despite all I've done to this hundred dollar bill, why do you still want it? And they, they, all of them responded, because he, the value is still, in, the value is still there. Despite all you were doing to it, it has not affected the value. It has affected its look, it has affected um, its, um, its attractiveness, but the value is still there. So it doesn't matter what you have gone through in life, your value is still intact. And um, don't let the devil deceive you. Your value, particularly before God your Father, is still intact. So don't devalue yourself. Don't, don't beat yourself down. Don't short circuit your life. Every word that will end up becoming a chief cornerstone in the scriptures is a precious, only precious stone. And stone that acknowledge that they are precious can become chief cornerstone. See a lot of the details in the book. You just have to know that you are precious. If you don't know, you won't become a chief cornerstone because God himself will not position you there because you won't be able to hold things together. Because of your insecurity, low self-esteem, you end up scattering the house. And that's not God's intention. God's intention is that once you are fitted as a chief cornerstone in the house, the whole building holds together, not that the whole building is scattered. It's not really that uh, a showman thing. It is the work of grace of God. It is the work of grace of God. God wants to showcase you. God, God wants you to reveal His glory to the world. First Peter chapter two, verse nine. First Peter chapter two, verse nine. Why would God make anybody a chief cornerstone? He, he said, "But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, God's uh, um, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, His own special people, His own special people, His own peculiar people, that you may proclaim the praises of Him." Who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light? That is God's purpose for making anybody a chief cornerstone. That you will show for his praises. Not that you will show for your own praises. No. God wants to use you to prove a point in this world. So you are there to show for his praises. So you must know that you are special. You are unique. You are peculiar. You are precious. It is a condition for you to become a chief cornerstone. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, sir. Our time is really running fast. And and if I must say, just anytime any voice within you is telling you, oh no, you don't have value, oh no, tell yourself, I'm I'm precious, I'm special. You know, before God, first Peter two nine, like I said, declare it often day and night, every day. Tell yourself I'm precious. So the next point, there's so much you can read in the book. Um, especially if you know anybody that is being rejected, who is down and telling themselves, no, I'm, I'm of no value. Let them know. Send them a copy of the book. Order for the book. The third one, which is almost the last one, the last step. God doesn't just give people responsibilities. The chief cornerstone is the one holding the house together. Before God can allow someone, to, can put an enormous responsibility on someone, can promote someone, God tries them. God makes sure that there are people that are reliable. They are not people that will, you know, <laughs> will collapse once weight is put on them. So that stone is a tried stone. And I think Pastor will be saying more about that as we round up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the third condition for anyone to emerge as a chief cornerstone. So everything is in the page of the scriptures. Mm. Yeah. The Bible makes us to understand that the chief cornerstone is a tried stone. A tried stone is a tested stone. See, before there can be any promotion in life, we know very well, you will be examined. You will pass through examination. You will be tested. So, if you have been rejected, there is a destiny for you as a rejected stone to becoming a chief cornerstone. Once you have suffered rejection, 
that God will do it in such a way that the people that say that you will amount to nothing, God will position you right before their eyes while they are still alive. Because that's what happened to Joseph. Mm -hmm. Joseph was chosen for what he wanted to do. He knew there was pressure despite whatever was happening to him. He, he, he never diminished his value. He acknowledged the gift of God upon his life. And he was tried. The Bible says concerning Joseph that the word of God tried him mm -hmm. before the king sent for him. So every every chief cornerstone, they are tried stone. And uh, like we said in the book, there are three tests you must pass mm -hmm. if you are ever going to end up becoming a chief cornerstone. I'll just talk about only one of them because of our time. And that is what we call the source tests. Mm -hmm. Who is your source? Mm -hmm. Until you come to the point that you know that my ultimate source in life is God. Every other are resources that God decides to use. And God could use any resource to meet your need. God could use any resource to lift you up. But you must not lose sight of the fact that my ultimate source in life is God. And see, that's what happened to Joseph when uh, Potiphar's wife wanted him to sin against God. He told her, in this house, no, my master put me over everyone, over everything. And there's nothing as we said for me in this house apart from you. And the reason is simple, because you are his wife. But Jesus said, how will I do this wicked thing and sin against Potiphar? No. He knew that Potiphar is just one of the resources that God decided to use. He said, but how will I do this wicked thing and sin against God? Mm -hmm. Joseph passed the source test. Mm -hmm. The Bible said the word of God tried him. The word of God tested him and he passed. Mm -hmm. As when he passed, the king sent for him. It is God that put people in position. Mm -hmm. And why is it that it is God that put people in position? The Bible makes us to understand every house is built by someone, but the builder of everything is God. The king sent for him. The word of God tried him, then the king sent for him. I believe that someone under the sound of my voice, going through some trial now, you are about to be sent for. Amen. A call is about to come in. Amen. Your life is about to change drastically. Amen. Particularly in that place that you have been rejected. It could be a career. Something is about to shift. My encouragement to you, pass the test. Mm -hmm. Because God will not put anyone that failed the test in that position. Mm -hmm. That the person will not be able to show forth the praise of his glory mm -hmm. that has called out of darkness into his marvelous life. There are two other tests that you can you, you definitely have to pass. But the bottom line, or the principal one, is this suspect. Go through the scripture. Everyone that were rejected or that were once a rejected stone and ended up becoming a chief cornerstone, all of them passed the suspect. test. Mm -hmm. Jesus was rejected. He said he came to his own, his own received him not. But as men that received him, he gave them power to become the son of God. In the book of Acts chapter 4, verse 10, 11, and 12, he says that, Peter said, this is the stone which was rejected by you. Him that God has raised up and has made a chief cornerstone. So every rejected stone that we end up becoming a chief cornerstone must be tried. The devil tried Jesus. He showed him everything, everything this world could offer. But Jesus passed. I pray for you too. You will pass your test. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of God for your life mm -hmm. will be fulfilled mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. In that place that you have been rejected, mm -hmm. stay on this lane. Go to the book. And I'm encouraging you, if you know anyone that is really, really down mm -hmm. because they have been through some process that they've been rejected, they've been ostracized, they've been discriminated against, and they seem not to be able to get themselves back. Send a copy of this book to them. I have no doubt within me that the truth and revelation in this book will liberate their life Amen. and their life will never remain the same. Amen. Every one of us will end up becoming a chief cornerstone Amen. and it shall be well in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we round up today, we can round up. Yes. 
Thank you, Jesus. There's a lot of revelations, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, has come up in today's uh, program. I uh, just want us to pray together. I don't know wherever you are in your journey. Um, just make up your mind. I'm going to fulfill my destiny. I'm mm -hmm. going to achieve the plan of God for my life. Mm -hmm. I'm going to become who God says I will become. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to pass the test. I just mm -hmm. want you to, you know, pray for that staying power as we mm -hmm. pray today. That Lord, strengthen me in my inner man. I'm going to pass the test. I'm not going to compromise. I'm not going to shift ground. Joseph stayed the course. Mm -hmm. From one challenge to the other, he stayed with God. And when you stay with God, he makes you, he tries you and he divinely places you where he wants you to be. Let's pray together. Our Father and our God, we just want to thank you. We are so grateful for this revelation that you have brought to us at this time. Daddy, for everyone currently going through rejection right now, who is down, who is tired, who is frustrated, we are asking for your healing power to come upon their lives. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are asking, Lord, for the balm of Gilead. Mm -hmm. We are asking you to strengthen them in their inner man in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. to stand mm -hmm. in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We ask that you show them what to do, mm -hmm. show them where to go, mm -hmm. show them who to meet. Mm -hmm. Give them the grace to pass the test in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. You, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Amen. you can... And we will not want to end this broadcast without giving you, under the sound of my voice, an opportunity for you to submit your heart to Jesus. If that is your prayer. I don't know what your pastor in life, but it's your prayer is that I want to anchor my life on Christ so that I can fulfill His purpose for my life. Put your hand by your chest and say this prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father, mm -hmm. in the mighty name of Jesus, I come name. before you today. Have mercy upon me. Cleanse me from all my sins. Write my name in your book of life. Mm -hmm. And in your kingdom, mm -hmm. don't let me be found wanting. Mm -hmm. Fulfill your purpose for my life mm -hmm. and I will give you glory mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. As I pray that prayer, your sins are forgiven. Mm -hmm. They are washed with the precious blood of Jesus. Amen. In God's kingdom, it will not be far wanting. Amen. And it shall be well with you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. See you in our next broadcast. Amen. Amen. That you must go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We must experience the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. When you have been born again, when you have been baptized with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, you have everything it takes to have a victorious, glorious Christian life. In the name that is above every other name, by the light of the Word of God today, your eyes are open. There is something about giving sight to people that is crucial to their destiny.